This is the continuation of a video where I try to beat every level in Super Mario 3D World without jumping. In that video, I completed worlds 1 through 6. In this video, I will do the remaining 6 worlds 7 through 12. Check the description if you want to see part 1 to get caught up to speed. My goal is to be able to beat at least 50% of the total 116 levels without jumping. In part 1, we tried 59 levels and 32 of them were possible. So far, that is over half. Let's see if the rest of these 57 significantly harder levels we're about to tackle keep up that streak going or ruin it. For clarification, the rules are on screen and they are unchanged from what they were in part 1. Let's jump right into it. Oh wait, we can't jump. As you might know, I use Peach with the cat suit for the levels. Why? The cat suit can climb walls to get on elevated platforms. Doing this combined with Peach's hover and scratch stalling allows us to cover surprisingly far distances without jumping. Seven one is an insane kickstart to the challenge you're about to witness. The first part is easy. Just enter the pipes and use the touchscreen to defeat the fire bros. But here, you can't wall climb and will just fall in the lava. So, we have to take a bit of a detour. Instead, we run off the platform and scratch stall and hover until we reach this elevated platform with fire. Then, I can damage boost and precisely hover over to the wall. This felt good to perform. From this high wall, I can bypass the area below completely and enter the pipe. The ending is a bit precise, and there is a hammer bro trying to hit you, but the level is just barely possible. I was not expecting 7-2 to be possible at all, but I am happy to say that this level is possible. In fact, the only thing that I need to mention is the ending. It seems like there is no way for me to get into the pipe. However, if you precisely wall climb here, you can hover and get just enough distance to get into the pipe. 7-2 is possible. 7-3 is also surprisingly straightforward. Just run on the boost pads, wall climb around the spikes, and the level is over. 7-3 is possible. Next, we have 7-4. Most of the level is just riding these arrow platforms. Here, I damage boost to get past the rotating spikes and then take out my second katsu. The section is just wall climbing off of platforms to get onto higher elevated platforms and pass gaps. After entering the pipes, I use the touchscreen to defeat the bullies and spawn the platforms. I then hover over to reach these platforms, and that is the level complete. Wow, four levels possible in a row, possible jump list. I wonder if 7-5 will make it five in a row or ruin it. It's probably gonna ruin it. Unfortunately, 7-5 is impossible right at the start. Immediately, there's an inescapable gap, which if you watched part one of this challenge was the main obstacle of like all the levels. There was no walls I can climb off of without being forced to jump. 7-5 is impossible. I have hilariously little to say about 7-6. 90% of it is just underwater, so there are only two sections worth mentioning. The first one is this checkpoint area where I climb on this ledge and then hover over to the pipe. The second section is the ending where I climb onto these elevated platforms. 7-6 is possible. 7-7 is considered to be a very hard level, especially for this challenge where you can't jump. At the beginning, I quickly climb this green platform before the lava rises. The level is one big lava cycle. Just avoid the enemies by using the touchscreen and the level is very simple. 7-A, 7-B, 7-C, and 7 Captain Toad all require no effort which is hilarious. 7 Castle. Oh no, I can't get onto this platform. Man, the lava's just too high. Wait a sec, guess what? I don't have to do this level. The ending is impossible anyway. If you watched part one, you would know that literally every castle level is impossible because of the ending setup. Looking back at world seven, I was pleasantly surprised. So far, this has been the best world because out of the 12 levels in world seven, a total of 10 of them were possible. That is really good if you ask me. To be honest, there isn't much to say about 8-1. To avoid the spikes, you have to fall off the platform and climb onto another one. This was especially annoying when I had these spikes on the cycle combined with all these dry bones trying to take your cat suit. Eventually, I got through it and the level was possible. 
H-2 is immediately impossible because you are locked behind a gate unless you ride Plessy and you can't get on Plessy without being forced to jump. Next, there is 8-3. We can use the touchscreen to our advantage to stop the cookies from moving so I can wall climb up them properly. Here, I climb up this wall, stall in the air, and time my dive just right so I somehow get into the cannon pipe. Hitboxes are weird. Anyways, after climbing more walls, the level is possible. So far in this video, I am shocked at how many possible levels there are over impossible levels, especially in World 7. It could be because of the layout of the levels. There are far less underground areas we have to deal with. 8-4 seems to be yet another example of an easy level. Just use a touchscreen to avoid taking damage from the thwomps and spikes. Honestly, just do the level as intended and follow the invisible path. We get into the warp box. Oh. All of the fencing is elevated and we're forced into this inescapable gap. Right at the ending. Well, 8-4 is impossible. To get past the water in 8-5, I can scratch on the wall on the top of the water to be able to climb the wall. This is not a jump as I only press Y to be able to do this. However, I get halted by Plessy. Again. I tried wall climbing here, but you don't have enough stamina to be able to get past the wall. Even if you did have enough stamina, the ceiling is too low that when you get off of the wall, it will just bonk your head against the ceiling and get absolutely no distance. It seems like 8-5 is just barely impossible. For 8-6, you can easily clear this gap with Peach. You can even make it into this door. Unfortunately, after you enter the door, you meet yet another inescapable gap. Wow. 8-7 is next. Yes, the level where you ride on a platform that tilts every two seconds. It turns out that you don't have to jump to ride these platforms, or jump to get on any of them. Just climb on it on the side. Just do the level the intended way and climb the sides to get on higher platforms. I'm shocked that this level is possible. I genuinely am. Literally 8-A and 8-B. 8-Mystery House. No. And of course 8-Train is impossible because it has the same ending bro. What did you expect? I can't even be sarcastic anymore. Finally, we have 8-Castle. This level is impossible, right? It has the same ending setup as the other castles, right? Actually, this level has a different ending setup, which is also in possible. Great. The results for World 8 are pretty disappointing. Out of the 12 levels in World 8, guess how many of them were possible? 3. Only 3. How did I get such a good World 7, and then the very next world has so many impossible levels? Wow, 9-1 is so easy. We're off to a great start. Just use the touchscreen to stop the lasers and climb this wall for every gap you have to make. Then we enter the warp box and there's Plessy. Once again, I have to ride Plessy to progress. But wait, what if I just climb this wall? Apparently you just can't climb this wall. Because oh no, Nintendo doesn't want you to skip this Plessy section. For 9-2, you can use the touchscreen to stop the moving platforms. In this section, I have to stop these blue platforms vertically so I can make the gaps and get into the warp box. After a couple wall climbs, I hit an obstacle. You reach these three moving platforms. Not only will I have to use the touchscreen on all three simultaneously in a short window, but I also have to get rid of this enemy. You can't cat swipe the enemy for some reason, so I have to stop these platforms back here, climb on one of them, and barely make the distance so I can ground pound the enemy. It took many attempts to get up here, but I eventually did it. I enter the warp box, and then, an inescapable gap. You have got to be kidding me. All of that just for the level to be impossible at the ending. 9-3 is a very fun level to do jumpless. It's hilariously easy too. These rolling ride platforms are irrelevant, literally just climb walls. That's the whole level. Level is possible. 9-4 This is the one and only level where the flagpole moves. This ought to be interesting. The problem isn't catching up to the flag, that part is easy. The problem is the fact that there are no walls in this level to climb on to, to actually touch the flag. I didn't know what to do. But then I had an idea. I could bounce on these enemies to hit the flag. 
However, there was no way for me to catch up to the flag that quickly. But then, I had another idea. Peach is one of the slowest characters in the game. So, I changed my character to Toad, the fastest character in the game. This is the one and only time where Peach isn't ideal. With Toad, I can reach the enemies far ahead of the flagpole, so I actually have time to set this up. I do lose the float, so bouncing on these is incredibly hard. Not only that, but I had to time it so that the flag is there when I am in the air. This literally took almost half an hour, but I finally did it. 9-4 is possible. Next we have 9-5. The first section is easy, just climb this large wall to get past the charging chucks. Then collect these key coins. For this fifth key coin however, I had to use the touch screen to break the bricks and then precisely float to collect the coin and grab the wall so I didn't get stuck in the inescapable gap. 9-5 is possible. The only thing me worth mentioning about 9-6 is the ending. I had to climb back here to get onto this weirdly short and thin fencing. Then I had to go all the way around it and then float across to just barely hit the flag. 9-6 is possible. Half of 9-7 is a water level, so all there is to talk about is 1. I float from this hole to this platform and two, I bounce off this small Goomba to get onto this platform. This level is very easy. 9-8 is one of those levels where I don't know for sure whether or not it's possible. I don't think it is though. I can get every single key coin without jumping except this one on the moving platform. Also, it doesn't seem like you can actually climb onto these stones. Let me know if you find a way to collect all these key coins, but it doesn't seem like it is doable. 9-9 this level, as you can imagine, was a pain. I had to ride these slow moving platforms and slowly swim underwater for like 95% of the level. For the ending, I had to precisely climb this wall to barely hit the flag. I messed this up multiple times and had to restart the whole level all over again. 9-9 is still possible. The only other level left was Captain Toad, which of course was possible. So out of the 10 levels in World 9, a total of 7 of them were possible. That's pretty good. Of course, not as good as World 7. Here is where things get interesting. All of the levels in Worlds 10 and 11 are inspired by previous levels in the game. So for some of these, I can go off the original level to see whether or not these levels are possible. However, the gameplay for other levels changes just enough to where the results might be different than your level's counterpart. Let's start with 10-1 which is a remix level of 2-4. Unfortunately, 10-1 still has a circular thing in the way, making this an inescapable gap. 10-2's counterpart is 1-3, and 1-3 is possible. However, 10-2 requires you to collect 5 key coins. Guess how many key coins you're able to collect? 4. There is literally one key coin that you're not able to reach because of this tree. For some reason, you need to jump to climb onto a tree. Also, it's not like I can go to a high point and then fall into the tree. This blue platform is the highest possible point of the level you can reach without jumping. You can't wall climb on this blue platform either. So I have to say that this level is just barely impossible. For 10-3, I can climb this wall to get to this box. This is so that I can defeat the blues. However, 10-3 has the exact same ending setup as 6-4, which is what caused 6-4 to be impossible. 10-4 is impossible because of this inescapable gap after entering the door. 10-5's counterpart is 6-3. 6-3 was Im immediately impossible because of the beginning. However, unlike in 6-3, the pipe isn't spawned yet this time. So now we can stand in the spot, the pipe will spawn, and then spawn it ourselves. Cool, right? It doesn't matter, we can't get up these stairs without jumping. We got in yet another inescapable gap. Next, we have 10-6. This level is somehow even crazier than 6-2. For the first part of the level, I climb around the ships on the sides. Then, I use this mega mushroom to get past all those enemies and somehow walk over the plank. I then take out my second cat suit, use the touchscreen to defeat the bullies, and precisely wall climb to beat the level. This is the first level in World 10 as is possible without jumping, and there are only two more levels left. 10-7 is next. 
Unlike 7-4, these aerial platforms aren't actually connected to the ground. This level is insane. First, you have to float across perfectly so you don't fall into the lava. Then, you have to kill a dry bone at about this spot, then climb up here, and then as the dry bones are reviving, you time it so that you bounce off of the dry bone to make it onto this platform. Then you have to perfectly float some more and damage boost across more aero platforms. After that, I take out my second cat suit and continue the level the exact same way I did 7-4. After I enter the pipe, I have to precisely get onto this third platform. Then I climb to these platforms quickly before they sink. Then I float over here to the end. That is 10-7 complete. Finally, we have 10-Mystery House. I can make it far, but I get halted in the 7th room where there are two unreachable enemies that I need to defeat. 10-Mystery House is impossible. Out of all 8 levels in World 10, only 2 of them were possible. That's embarrassing. Eleven dash one's counterpart was one dash five, which was immediately impossible because of the beginning. But remember what I said about how aspects of remix levels sometimes change for the better? Well, that's the case for this level. Eleven dash one gets rid of the awful beginning and makes the level pretty easy. This is the first level where its original level is impossible, but the remix level is possible. I'm sorry, but eleven dash two is so annoying that I wanted this level to be impossible so I could be finished with it. There are so many spots where you could just straight up lose your cat suit. There are also a lot of clouds that could completely ruin your wall climb. I'm pretty sure the level is impossible though because of the ending. 11-3's counterpart is 4-2, which is impossible because of a linear section. However, 11-3 doesn't have that linear section. The beginning section is easy, and for the middle section I float over these moving platforms. Here, I bounce off this piranha plant so I can get onto this torch thing that isn't lit up. Then, I float over to this elevated platform to get into the pipe. The level is possible. 11-4's level is not only a counterpart to 7-1, but a completely identical copy. The only thing that changes is this strict timer. This is actually a problem since this level is so technical. I have to speedrun the level. It is possible, but it was really annoying to do. The whole level, this whole level is annoying so far. The entire year of World 11 is annoying. Like it literally took me over an hour just to get the footage for four levels. Anyways, moving on. 11-5 is probably the easiest level in this entire video. Outside of the enemy blockades and Captain Toad levels. Literally just go in this pipe, climb to this pipe, and the level's over. Next we have 11-6, whose counterpart is 3-3. 3-3 was impossible, and 11-6 has the same section that made 3-3 impossible. Or so I thought. In 11-6, there are these three question blocks that I can reach, and then climb off those to get into the door. That's the only thing worth mentioning in this hilariously easy level. Going back to 3-3, there aren't any question blocks. However, for some reason I can stand onto this candle, and then climb up to this cloud. I can now float over to this door. But the next section is impossible because it is an inescapable gap. 3-3 is still impossible, but 11-6 is possible. There isn't much to say about 11-7. It is just 3-5 again and none of the layout change in 11-7 affects the fact that it is possible. Also, 11-8 is just 4-3 again, but the blocks have faster cycles and there are spikes. So, 11-8 is possible. 11-9 and this counterpart 5-1 are probably the most different levels. 11-9 removes both the key coins and the entire plusy section, which is what made 5-1 impossible. So yeah, 11-9 is a piece of cake. 11-10 is also the exact same as this counterpart 9-6. Wow, Nintendo got lazy with these remakes, huh? So I'm taking inspiration from them and making this incredibly brief, yay! Next we have 11-11 which once again has pretty much the same strategies as 8-1 but with more caution because of the increase in spikes. 11-11 is possible. Now it is time for the final level in World 11, 11-12, a boss gauntlet. HA! What did you expect? Out of the 12 levels in World 11, a total of 10 of them were, are possible. 
That is insane because it ties World 7 to the best success rate of jumpless levels. We are ready for the home stretch. These are the final three levels in the game. Let's get two of them out of the way. 12 Dash Captain Toad is Captain Toad, so it's possible. And the second room in 12 Dash Mystery House, aka Mystery House Marathon, is impossible. So now, let's get into the big boy, Champions Road. Champions Road starts out fine. This wall climb to get across the platforms as usual. This block section is very precise. It requires perfect timing of wall climbs and floats to stall in the air. Next, we have a section where you need to wall climb on these brown falling blocks to defeat the Kamiks. Then, I use the touch screen to stop these swinging spikes from hitting me. At the same time, I have to wall climb around the spikes. I use my floats to cross this large gap. In this section, I use the touch screen so that the boost pad automatically does its job without me having to jump. The water section is done like normal. Now we have one final section. These dash panels and lasers are an extreme hindrance. You can easily float over these first few boost panels, but normally I have to jump over these lasers every time they come at me. But huh, looks like we can't do that. There are five key coins we need to collect, and we can only take damage twice, or else I won't have a backup cat suit to use so that the ending is possible. Even with the touchscreen, it seems impossible to stop all of these lasers at once. So does that mean this level is impossible? Well, technically it is possible. I don't think I would come to this, but I do have one more trick up my sleeve. You see, there is this one amiibo that when you scan it, it makes you invincible forever. So if one were to equip the amiibo, they would theoretically collect all of the five key coins without a problem. After this section, the rest of the level is done without jumping, just like normal. So the hardest level in the game, Champions Road, is technically possible to beat without jumping. Of course, if there's a way I was unaware of to get past this section without taking damage, let me know. Out of the three levels in World 12, a total of two of them were possible to beat without jumping. Out of the 57 levels we did in this video, a total of 34 were possible. We have attempted all 116 levels in Super Mario 3D World. Out of those levels, 66 of them are possible to beat. That is about 57%. Looks like we reached our goal of completing at least half of the levels without jumping. Of course, if these levels that I deemed impossible are actually proven to be possible without multiplayer, let me know. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing for more videos like this one. With that, I'd like to thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you next time.